In this screencast, we're going to look at an example of how to use Laplace transforms to solve linear differential equations. So consider again the example of the thermal mixer. So recall that our energy balance for this um, scenario was, was what you can see here. So the mass times the time derivative of the temperature is equal to the flow of the temperature times the temperature coming in in stream one plus the flow times the temperature coming in stream two, minus the sum of those two all times your temperature. And for completeness, at time t equals zero, our initial condition is that the outlet temperature t is equal to some t zero. Now we can rearrange this equation to get something that looks a little bit more like standard form. So that would look like this. So our time derivative of temperature is equal to 1 over tau times F1 over F1 plus F2 times T1 plus F2 over F1 plus F2 times T2 all of that minus T where I've defined tau as equal to the mass divided by F1 plus F2. So if we take that equation and then we redefine our variables in, in terms of deviation variables, so you let t hat equal to t minus t0, and now I'm going to define this u hat as this sum here minus t0, then what we get is the following. The time derivative of t hat plus t0, or like t bar, but in this case we called it t0, is equal to 1 over tau times this sum that we had before, minus t0, minus t minus t0. So all I've done here is instead of substituting in t hat plus t0 here, I have subtracted off a t0 here and then, or sorry, it's subtracting a subtraction, so it's adding on a t0 here and um, subtracting it off there. So that we have our two groupings here because this here is t hat and this here is what I had defined above as u hat. So with those simplifications and rearrangements, what we get for our equation is d t hat dt is equal to one over tau times u hat minus capital T hat, where t hat of zero, of course, is equal to zero because of the way we've defined it as a deviation variable, its initial condition is zero. So it's interesting that we were able to take this fairly complicated looking differential equation up at the top with lots of different terms and we realize that there's only two terms that are important this u hat which is this combined thing here and that is just a constant and this t hat which is our deviation variable so for right now we're going to ignore the dynamics of the actuator and sensor just because this is a simple example and we're going to use the Laplace transform method to solve this differential equation that we just derived with our F1 making a step change from five kilograms per second to four kilograms per second at T equals zero. Now what that means is our U hat at T greater than zero is equal to four ninths times 25 plus five ninths times 75 minus 50. So what that is, this is the first fraction, F1 over F1 plus F2, times T1, plus the second fraction, F2 over F1 plus F2, times T2 minus T0. So that's our U hat equals 2.78. And so what U of T looks like is that U of T, this is not U hat, Actually, it should be u hat, right? u hat looks like it starts off at zero 
and then at time t equals zero, it makes a step change up to 2.78. And for now, we're just gonna call that constant capital A, or our amplitude of our step change. So what we want to do is we want to apply the Laplace operator to our whole equation. So we're gonna take this equation right here, and we're going to apply the Laplace transform to the whole equation. So what we do when we get that is you get your Laplace variable s times your Laplace transform y of s minus t hat of z t hat initial condition t hat at zero is equal to one over tau times the Laplace transform of u hat u of s minus your Laplace transform of t hat, which I'm calling capital Y of s. And this, of course, the Laplace transform of our step change is a over s. So solving for y of s, now it's just an algebraic equation, it's not a differential equation anymore, so solving for capital Y of s is equal to a over tau, all of that over s times s plus one over tau. And so this is the solution for, for our Laplace transform of t hat. Now what we want to get in, uh, in the end is we want to get what is t hat as a function of time not what is the Laplace transform of t hat. And so now we have to take this function and do an inverse Laplace transform and put it back into what's called the time domain, or back into variables that we are normally familiar with. But Laplace, inverse Laplace transforms, at least in this class as we teach it, is not going to be a, um, we're not going to actually apply some formula inverse Laplace transform, some line integral in the complex plane in order to get that. So what you need to do is you need to put this function into a form that uh, can be inverted according to the lo inverse Laplace transform table. So the inverse Laplace transform table, which you can see in the first page of this topic, uh, is shown here. So there are a lot of very common functions that you can do inverse and forward Laplace transforms with. In particular, we want to know, we want to be able to use this one. So we want to be able to put our function into um, linear combinations of, of this sort of uh, function here. So returning back to the example, here's our function. We want to be able to put it into uh, something that, that looks like this so we can invert it back to the time domain. Okay, and in, in order to do that, what we will be using throughout this class is something called partial fraction expansion. In other words, anything that looks something like this can be re-expressed as the following. Capital Y of S is equal to some constant over S plus some other constant over S plus one over tau. So all I've done is I've noted that this part of the denominator can be put into one term and this part of the denominator can be put into another term. So at this point, then we'll have one term that can be inverted this way and the other term which can be inverted this way. Once we do that, then our function finally in the end will be t hat as a function of time is equal to c1 plus c2 times e to the minus t over tau. But the problem is, what are c1 and c2? Well, what we can do is we can take this version of y of s up here at the top, and we can multiply it by through by the denominator. Then we can also multiply this one through by that same denominator. And then we get the following. And then we can equate them and get the following. A over tau is equal to c1 times s plus 1 over tau plus c2 
times s. And this is an equation that we are going to refer to a couple times. I'm going to call it star. Now, this equation has to hold for each and every value of s. So in particular, it holds for very particular values of s. So we can substitute those particular values of s in to make our lives easier. So for example, if s equals 0, then star becomes a over tau equals to c1 times 1 over tau. And if s equals minus 1 over tau, then star becomes a over tau equals to c2 times minus 1 over tau. Therefore, solving those for c1 and c2, c1 is equal to capital A, c2 is equal to minus capital A, and then we, which means that we can express y of s in the form capital A over s minus capital A over s plus 1 over tau. So all I've done there is I've substituted c1 and c2 back into this form of y of s. Once we have um, y of s in that form, we can use the table, in particular these two parts of the table, to transform y of s back into the time domain. And we find that capital T hat as a function of time is equal to a minus a e to the minus t over tau, or often it will be expressed as a times the quantity 1 minus e to the negative t over tau. Now we're going to be using this partial fraction expansion um, all the time in many different cases. So we're going to next look at three different possible cases. One in which our um, Uh, the denominator here has only real values of s that we would substitute in. Sometimes there will be complex values of s that will solve for the denominator being equal to zero. And sometimes you'll have multiple values of s solving the denominator equal to zero many times. So if, for example, if this were like s plus 1 over tau quantity squared. And those are the next things that we're going to look at in the screencasts.